So this segment, let's go ahead and talk about how to name acids. So right off the bat, I'll go ahead and say that I've been a chemist for quite a long time, so I just kind of have an understanding of how to name acids. Um, what I'm going to show you here are the basic rules for knowing how to do it, and over time, it will become more of second nature to you. Um, but in the meantime, it's just going to have to be something that you memorize. So I'll give you a few examples here, and then you're going to want to go back and do them a few times and do a few different ones so that you can get your um, level of comfort um, up. So let's recall that acids produce proton ions when dissolved in water, right? So H plus ions. And that an acid can be thought of as a molecule with one or more um, H plus ions attached to an anion. And so basically, then when we're talking about the rules for naming acids, it's going to depend on whether or not the anion contains oxygen. So that's kind of a good trigger point. Remember that whether or not the anion contains oxygen will help you to remember how to name your acid. So let's go with the first rule. So if the anion does not contain oxygen, then the acid is named with the prefix hydro and the suffix ic attached to the root of the element. So the one example I have here is H2S, which is dihydrogen sulfide. And so when we dissolve it in water, then we'll get the acidic form of that. And it will be named hydro for the prefix, and then the root, right, is sulfur, and then the ick on the end. So we get hydrosulfuric acid from H2S. So the second rule is that when your anions contain oxygen, the acid name is formed from the root of the central element of the anion or the anion name with the suffix of ick or us. So let's distinguish between whether or not you get the ick or whether or not you get the us. So when the anion name ends in eight, then you get the suffix ick. So a couple of examples, H2SO4. So the anion of H2SO4 is SO4 two minus. Um, a quick recall here is you might be wondering how I remembered that SO4 is a two minus, has a two minus charge. Well, I know for sure that H has a plus one charge and there are two of them. So that means that SO4 must have a two minus charge. It's a simple way to remember if you don't always remember the charges on your polyatomic anions. Okay, so this sulfate ion is the anion of H2SO4, so, and it ends in eight, so that means we're gonna replace it with ick once it becomes an acid. So H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. We also have HNO3, for which the anion is NO3 minus. Again, here I have one proton, so that means that the charge on my polyatomic must be minus one to get an overall zero charge. So nitrate here for the anion will turn into nitric acid with the IC ending. Um, another quick thing since we're still talking about acids that you'll remember is that H2SO4 is a diprotic acid. It can lose two protons in solution versus HNO3 is a monoprotic acid. Just a quick aside. So the last part of this rule is that when your anion name ends in ite, the suffix us is used. So a couple of examples, H2SO3, for which the anion is SO3 two minus, we name that sulfite. So then the acidic form of H2SO3 is sulfurous acid. And then last but not least here, HClO, this is a chlorine and one oxygen, which has the anion of ClO minus, which is a hypochlorite. And so that would give us hypochlorous acid. So within this um, naming of acids, there are about 10 or 15 pretty common strong acids that you'll probably need to know and understand how to name. And I encourage you to um, look those up and work on that skill, and that's naming acids.